How many koi species do you have? Between 30 and 40. Different species of koi? Yes. Holy crap. I enjoy sort of the hunt for a certain species that I want. I'm Leonard. I mainly focus on quarries. All my stuff mainly comes from the Amazon, I would say. Mainly small fish, but lately started to play around with slightly larger species. Got some bichers and Aussie longfish. Anything that's really interesting, really. So I've been keeping fish my whole life. Originally from Holland, so I did everything over there. Moved here to Australia eight or nine years ago. And then once we bought this place, I could finally have some room to start something again. Yeah, a couple of years later, having an insane amount of fish gone. <laughs> I actually reached out to you like a bit over a year ago and asked for help to have yeah, a spawn. Yeah, you're saying yeah. But yeah, these are the CW10 gold lasers. I think a fan favorite of a lot of people here in Australia. For my little shop, this is probably my most sold corridors, 100%. It's an easy fish to spawn, everybody loves them. I personally love the, the natural looking ones heaps better than this gold kind of stuff, but they're still really cool, Corey. What is it about Corey's that you like? I think I've always liked bottom feeders, any catfish, I think, in general. Because Australia is so limited in the species that we can get, it is just cool and kind of an accomplishment to collect as many as you can whereas in Europe everything is available so it's nothing too special. I enjoy sort of the hunt for a certain species that I want. You know heaps of the stuff that I've got here I'll be breeding for myself because the, the, there won't be market like as the people that really want it. It's my like little private collection really. Yeah I just think they're awesome. I think the best fish ever everybody should get in them. CW49. These are cool fish. Yeah these are super cool so I accidentally spawned them when I moved them. These are not super easy to spawn at all. Cone color or cone color. These guys are really, really cool and very underrated in my opinion. So they get a really cool, like orangey kind of color and the males get these elongated dorsals and they're just a really chunky fish. In all my tanks, I'll have shrimp. There's not a lot of like mom or debris on the bottom and you're trying to create these little ecosystems. And I think the cleanup crew is definitely part of it. So it never be a real ecosystem, but shrimp do a lot of my work next door. They look like Napanesis or something. So they're the elegance, the Napanesis, these guys. Compared to some other lineages, Cory's can look very similar, male or female. These guys, there's a lot more differentiation between the male and the female. So the males, they got the elongated dorsal and they get a really nice like yellow gold color. So how many tanks do you have? I think it's about 35, between 35 and 40 maybe. Yeah. These ones originally came in as 120s. I just divided all of them, or at least most of them, to have more space for breeding and keep quarries individually. Do you keep species together in the same tank? No, so that's what I did before, and then that sort of negatively influenced the breeding. So now I keep them species only, and then up there is my quarry collection tank where, yeah, there's fish that whenever these tanks are empty, I can sort of swap things around and play around new species. So this is the collection thing. I reckon there's about 20 species in here. So some of the species in here are species that are hardly been bred, if at all. So not species that I'm ready yet to play around with. I don't have any backgrounds in all my tanks, mainly because I use the corner meta filters and I just wanted to have one tank with a background and I was hoping that it was gonna look good with the corner meta filters. It's just some amazing species in here that probably a lot of people never really seen, or at least not in Australia, I guess. So these are C39. Maybe for a lot of people that don't know, Cory's, they'd say, you know, Dorfoy or Duplicarius. Definitely not, way different species. Females are super chunky. Yeah. The males are the smaller ones. These are the Atropersonatus. So I've spawned these times quite a few times. These are, I think the common name is Fairy Cory. Yeah. But yeah, but the common names of the Cory is always a bit weird because there's actually quite a few species that sort of Look the same. Carry the same common name as well. So it's just super confusing. What's your favorite species right now? Equius is my favorite until I've spawned it and then I'll find another one. Species that we can get in Australia this because there's there's other species that I would then I would love, but I have never seen them here. So these are definitely the quarries that I love. More the, the plain looking grey looking. No, they're beautiful. I yeah. love them. I've kept these before but gave up quickly. Once I find some more time in my private life will be my focus. Yeah. yeah, I really, really, really want to spawn these guys. When you're looking to breed a quarry, what is like the steps that you sort of go through? I think the main step is just get good quality broodstock, especially here in Australia. 
we are limited in the stuff that we're getting and most of the stuff comes from farms that just mass produce. So get good genetics. You don't per se need wild corn, but just get good genetics. Then conditioning, so just proper food. Good husbandry in general. Like people say, oh, it needs to be super clean water or whatever. I mean, just take care of your tank. Do your, do your regular water changes and feed them properly. And it's, I reckon it's exactly the same as us. If you want best success and best healthy fish, then give them a variety in their diet. There's species that spawn a lot easier than others and that don't need a lot of preparation, but there's heaps of species out there that maybe even haven't been bred or hardly been bred that we know of. They might need a lot more around recreating their natural environment and especially that wet and dry season. You know, cold water changes, rainwater, live foods, all that stuff. Like you can make it as crazy as you want, but I think to get into it, it's good to just look at where they come from, recreate their natural environment, and they should spawn. And if they're not, well then, you know, you try something else. Some of the actually larger females jumped over, but the other chunky ones you see are Cordomaculatis. They are on the wholesale lists now and then, and I honestly do not understand why they're not more readily available and why I don't see people with them, because out of all the quarries, I mean, I think they are super cool. They're very chilled, they're yeah. super chunky, they're pretty easy to spawn. Acutis, so these guys, I haven't seen many in Australia, so I have sold quite a lot, which I'm happy with because I really wanted to spread this species. So you're up here in Cairns, you would probably have more thunderstorms year round than yeah. anywhere else in Australia. Yeah. Do you think that that helps you with your breeding? It does and it doesn't because we have that severe weather in the wet season when it's super hot up here as well. To sit around that ideal breeding temperature it's hard to do that in the wet season because it's just too hot. Yeah. Now I've got the aircon on inside anyways, which kind of keeps the room cool enough. But for me, dry is better because then I can just control the temperatures a bit easier. What have we got down here? Malini. Like a bandit quarry with stripes. Yeah, there's Matei or Matai. That is probably a more common species on the Australian market that looks quite similar. So Corridoras looks as owners. <laughs> that looks like to someone who's hasn't seen as many quarries. They look so similar to the ones down yeah. below. There's so many quarries that, that look like each other, yes. I hate it when people say it, but it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and all your tanks, are they separate system? Yeah, at the moment, all the tanks that I changed up have corner met in. In my older tanks, which is actually one here, I had a metan filter all the way in the back. That's how I sort of started up this room. All my tanks had that, which does the job, but it's just really hard to clean such a big mat. So I just changed it up into the corner so it's just easier maintenance. And I mean, these things you don't need to clean for one, two years anyways. But when you do, it gives such a mess. And I also like my tanks to be reasonably clean. So I, I might clean it more than I should. Okay, so down here is a cool fish. This is the Desert Gobi. They're native to Australia. That particular male you're filming now is on eggs. Wow. So that's one of the more dominant males. Yeah, unbelievable. Wow, yeah. wow. I use these little PVC tubes because it's just easy. Plus the cap at the back, you can pop it off so you can slide the male out easily without disturbing the eggs too Are much. these quite easy to breed? Super easy to breed. Not too hard to raise either. They just come out really, really tiny. If you leave them in here, they'll all get eaten. So I let the male sit for quite a bit because he does all the work and yeah. they do a lot better job than we do. Yeah. So let them sit and then get them out when it comes close to hatching. And then when they hatch, I actually find the fry quite hardy and strong. They're just super tiny. So these guys, yeah, some shoots, say. Eh? I've never been able to get these to breed properly. Oh, these are super easy to spawn. They're easy to spawn, but I couldn't get them to fertilize their eggs. Man-made strain. Because sometimes, you know, out of all the quarries, you see them like swimming in against the, the glass and go mental. You're like, hey, that's not quarry behavior. And again, we've been interfering. They're still pretty cool fish. There's some albino sturbays. These are the macrostomas. Yeah. I just love mouth brooding betters. And these, I guess, are definitely the, the holy grail. grail. Yeah, the holy grail. I've had them spawn so many times, the male always seems to eat their, his eggs. I keep telling myself that I'm gonna grab him out and sort of get the eggs out of him. I kind of just want him to do his job, but they're way too expensive. So I'd love to get them down a little bit. When I got these guys, I was working with RO. They can be quite finicky, but now I've got them on tap. I'd love to just you know, pump out heaps of fry and, and get them strong enough to just live on our tap water. I think everybody that keeps fish draws like fish rooms in their spare time. I mean, when I was younger or whatever, like you just, you come up with these ideas and you sit down and you draw stuff and like dreams, right? Yeah, when things become reality, then you can sort of use the ideas that you had in the past. This L shape was the design on that side. I was supposed to have like a couch, maybe a TV just to chill. 
but then well you know how it is you know one thing becomes a hundred things and it's never enough so yeah this wreck and another wreck came it's a bit of a gallery slash functional breeding room how small is this room four and a half or four and a half or whatever like it so i mean you don't need a lot of space you just got to be creative i did make some mistakes i could have used the space better and the biggest thing for me is just my water storage i don't have to do it because of cairns and the way this house is built in the wet season my tap water you know goes 30 plus which you know is I can't use for water changes. Plus, Cairns water is really clean, but I still go through a three-way filter just to filter out everything. And then when I store it, I can play around with the water. So this was always something that I wanted, but there's things that I could change, but I think for the time being, it's fine, yeah. Do you reckon you'll always like do quarries or? I think so, yeah. It's hard to say because I, I, I've noticed how quickly you're interested in, in other stuff. There's heaps of fish that I like, and, and honestly, I want to spawn everything. Every single fish that's out there, I want to spawn them all. So yeah, I think I will always stick with my quarries, but then I will rotate heaps of other fish. Thank you so much for taking us through the fish room. And yeah, no problem, mate. It was fun. Yeah, no, it's really cool. You got a really cool collection. But yeah, no, thank you so much, Lena. Yeah, no problems. All right, sweet, see you guys.